When I began studying humpback whales almost 50 years ago, there was very little funding for such research. I'd like to thank the Pacific Life Foundation for their unparalleled generosity in supporting the conservation of humpback whales and other marine mammals. Enabling a better future is what Pacific Life does. And their support of a healthy ocean benefits all of us, whales as well as people. a kind of parallel universe. A place of wonder where giants roam free. Thousands of years, we could only wonder about humpback whales. Now, by exploring their world, we're getting surprising glimpses into their lives. A 40-ton adult appears weightless in its ocean home. school bus. These 50-foot giants are nimble. With a wingspan greater than most linger jets, humpbacks are magnificent acrobats. Often seen in shallow waters, these mammals occasionally dive to a depth of a thousand feet. contains a single stiff hair, which may help them sense their environment. Today we celebrate them, but it wasn't always so. Whales were hunted for hundreds of years and rendered into oil to light our cities. When whalers developed exploding harpoons, these giants had no chance. We nearly wiped humpback whales off the face of the planet. Then, during the Cold War, a US Navy observer recording the hum of Soviet submarines heard something mysterious. The otherworldly calls of humpback whales. Humpbacks string their songs together in a continuous river of sound. The music of the deep. In the 1970s, when these recordings were studied by scientists Roger Payne and Scott McVeigh, they recognized that the seemingly random noises were actually precise rhythmic patterns of sound, or songs. When record albums were released, the humpback songs changed millions of hearts. People from many nations joined together to support a ban on killing whales. The song of the humpback helped us to begin to understand, finally, that whales are magnificent, complex beings, worthy of protection, worthy of life. This was our turning point.
here was hard hit by whaling. In Tonga, there were only about 50 mature females left. In 1978, when the king of Tonga banned the killing of whales, the humpbacks here slowly began to recover, one calf at a time. Today in Tonga, there are about 2,000 humpbacks, a fraction of what once was, but it's a start. The humpback resurgence has now sparked a whale-watching boom here. The increased tourism has raised the standard of living for the local people, like Ali Taka. My grandfather was a whale. He hunted humpbacks to feed our family. Instead of killing humpbacks, Ali works hard to save them. The future of our humpbacks depends on these children. I tell the kids about the whaling days, so we never have that kind of killing again. was taking tourists and scientists out to see the humpbacks. Now these magnificent whales have begun to recover. Each calf is critical to Tonga's fragile resurgence. After a full year of pregnancy, mothers give birth to a single 14-foot baby. What's it like to be a newborn humpback, floating in a vast blue world, where your only landmark is a mountain of mother? waters with a whole community of marine life. The remora fish come along for the ride. Even when the mother sleeps, the newborns don't stray far from mother's milk. few weeks, the calves get bold and they take off on their own. They're so curious and they've got so much energy. copying their mothers. In their first year, they double in size.
Each calf stays with its mother only about one year to learn about the world. How to migrate thousands of miles. What to eat and how to find it. Who to trust and who to fear. Whalers like my grandfather once targeted mothers and calves because they move so slowly. I always loved my grandfather, but he didn't understand the need to stop killing whales. The killing stopped here in Tonga, but not everywhere. Three nations, Japan, Norway, and Iceland, still allow commercial and scientific whaling. Today, fewer people kill whales on purpose, but we now kill them without even knowing it. When a ship collides with a whale, the impact is often fatal. And the number of ships on the world's oceans has doubled in the last 12 years. There is something we can do about these fatal collisions. One solution is to slow down ships or reroute them to avoid the migratory pathways of whales. Here in Tonga, the mothers go for months with almost nothing to eat. To find food, the humpback whales in Tonga head south to the frigid, bountiful waters of Antarctica. Many humpbacks in the North Pacific Ocean migrate to Alaska. been studying the behaviors of humpback whales here for the past 25 summers. Most of the time humpback whales in Alaska feed on krill. These small shrimp-like crustaceans thrive here in waters enriched by upwelling currents and glacial nutrients. The tiny krill might be harder to catch if humpback whales have teeth, but they don't. Instead of teeth, humpback whales have baleen. It's a kind of strainer that hangs from the roof of their mouth. It lets the water through, but allows them to trap these tasty morsels like the fish and the krill. When we're trying to locate big feeding pods, it's almost like you're coming home to family. Fred has studied these particular whales for so long that he can often tell who's vocalizing just by listening. We know who is who because each of these whales has a really distinctive tail fluke. It's kind of like a fingerprint. No two are exactly alike. So I run the prints. This is Melancholy. I've really come to know him over the past 20 years, from studying his behaviors and even sketching him. I often see Melancholy with another male who we call vulture. Many whales feed individually, but Melancholy and his crew have learned a really cool strategy. They can capture more fish by working together as a team. When we hear the feeding calls and see the whales work together, we know we're in for quite a show. What happens next is one of the most incredible and complex animal behaviors ever observed. It's called group bubble net feeding. The first step is always the synchronized dive. Some of the whales dive deep underneath the school of herring to drive them up towards the surface. With their long pectoral flippers, 
they can outmaneuver fast moving prey. The bubble specialist blows a stream of bubbles, forming a spiraling wall of air that acts like a net to keep the fish from getting away. The designated vocalizer begins to make almost deafening sounds, scaring the fish up towards the surface. To get cold up here in the fall, melancholy, vulture, and all the other whales begin to leave. They'll travel thousands of miles down to their warm water breeding areas, like Costa Rica, Mexico, and Hawaii. Some humpbacks migrate 5,000 miles one way every year. One of the longest known migrations of any mammal. There are 15 distinct populations of humpback whales, located in all the oceans of the world. They feed in polar and subpolar regions, and breed and give birth in the tropics. Each winter, the Hawaiian Islands host the largest gathering of humpbacks in the North Pacific. Thousands of whales. Humpbacks may live up to 80 years or more. They seem as curious about us as we are about them. Other whales and dolphins vocalize, but humpbacks make a greater variety of sounds than any other whale including grunts, groans, walks, snorts, and barks. When humpbacks leap or breach, they make it look easy. No other whale leaps so high so often. We're not exactly sure why they do it, but we're glad they do.
On a quiet morning in Hawaii, you can hear hundreds of humpbacks in their hidden world below, all singing at once. A reminder of how their songs began changing our hearts so many years ago. Today, Dr. Jim Darling lowers the hydrophone into the water, just as he did decades ago when Roger Payne first invited him here to record humpback whales. For scientists like Jim, finding singers isn't easy, but there are clues. When whales dive, they leave a slick spot on the surface, what researchers call a footprint. Sometimes when Jim looks down through the footprint, he spots a singer. All the singers in Hawaii start each breeding season singing the same song. Incredibly, when one singer changes his song, they all adopt those same changes. By comparing the latest song against previous versions, Jim can pinpoint exactly what has changed. Jim's colleague, Dr. Megan Jones, helps him search for those changes in the song. Two years ago, Jim recorded a song with a really distinctive phrase. We started calling it Chuckles because it made us laugh. But this year, the chuckles are starting to disappear. After years of study, scientists were surprised to discover the singers were all males. While the males are busy singing, what are the females up to? Dr. Megan Jones studies the behavior of female humpbacks it's not easy because they spend 90% of their time underwater, out of sight. So she catches only glimpses. One of the most important questions I'm trying to answer is how females choose their mates.
chase lasted four grueling hours. We think the competition may allow the female the opportunity to select the fittest mate. One day, just as the other male rivals swam away, the male and female pair stayed around and circled our boat for well over an hour. swimming upside down and using the boat to discourage the male. But as we watched the pair circle and dance around each other and us, it became clear that at least in this case, the female was following him as much as the male was following her. Was this courtship? Was she trying to attract him? This is what we think may be happening. But until we see mating, we can just never be sure. For me, these are the best kind of days. When new observations lead to new questions. When Megan is out studying whales, she sometimes runs into the real dangers they face. Like loose, floating debris. Maybe threat the animal. More than half of these humpback whales bear scars from being tangled up in ropes and fishing nets. This humpback whale population is growing. But we think worldwide, the humpback population may be only 40% of what it was before whaling began. Some of the most serious problems facing whales have no immediate solution. But when individual whales get entangled, some of them can be saved by rescue teams, like the one here in Hawaii. Most rescues start with a phone call from a boater. Reporting entangled whales is one important way to help humpbacks. The team caught up to the entangled whale in just under an hour. This young, energetic humpback whale is trailing more than 200 feet of line and buoys behind it. Each entanglement is different, so team leader Ed Lyman has to keep adjusting his strategy. If this young whale is not set free by Ed's team, he could die from infection, starvation, or even drowning. A key tool is their grapple. That's how they hook onto the trailing gear, and then pull themselves close enough to cut the whale free. We attach a transmitter to help track the whale, in case we lose it, and buoys to keep it from diving deep. Even with extensive training, it's dangerous for Ed and Joe to get so close to a huge animal under stress. We work entirely from boats. People have been killed jumping in the water to cut whales free. If we hear signs of stress, like a trumpeting blow, we back off. Our pole cam gives us an underwater view and helps us see what's going on. We need to get this gear off. These wounds are, are bad. These young ones are unpredictable. Our whale makes a sudden U-turn and snags his gear on a nearby boat. So we race back to cut the boat free. Right, okay, good. As soon as we cut that line, he takes right off. Even dragging all those buoys, the whale is just pulling us too fast. We actually got what the old-time whalers call a Nantucket sleigh ride. If we attach a sea anchor, it'll slow it down.
it all went that way today. But it doesn't always work out. Even Ed's heroic team can't save every whale. But you and I can help reduce the number of entangled humpbacks. Encourage the use of whale-safe gear and keep debris out of the ocean. Why they fall off of humpback whales? For centuries, men and boats brought them pain and death. It brings us such joy to flip that around and bring them life instead. It took hundreds of years for people all across the world to wake up and hear the song of the humpbacks. In the early days, humpbacks were known as our guardians. Now it's our turn. Future generations of scientists have their work cut out for them. Each new insight scientists gain into these remarkable whales helps us protect them against the growing threats they face. Oceans cover 71% of our planet, and humpbacks roam them all. Just one look in their eye will tell you. We have much more to learn about their world. And to think, we nearly missed that chance. Thank you.